Parents of Reddit, what lessons have you tried to teach your kids that completely backfired? One of my 5 year old twins was still having occasional accidents, because she would get so caught up in playing slash doing something else, that she just wouldn't go, and would pee her pants. To combat this, we would give her a special prize of some variety when she wouldn't have an accident. This, in turn, caused her twin sister to start having accidents, so she could get prizes for not having accidents, even though she was fine on this front beforehand, we had to rethink our methods. My grandpa and my parents would make me go to the toilet every night before bed, no matter what, sometimes, I'd be sleeping and they'd wake me up, take me to the toilet. Wake me up when I fell asleep sitting on the toilet, put me back in bed and sleep with no worries. Always before bedtime, and any trip that puts you more than 3 minutes from a bathroom, took a while to learn that lesson. Yes, in my family we say go squeeze, so I accidentally said that casually to one of my classes and they were like, wah, squeeze. My niece and nephew use the bathroom before bedtime as an excuse to prolong bedtime. Every night, without fail, I have to go poop, you just went to the bathroom, plus you pooped earlier today, but I have to go poop, proceeds to sit on toilets for 10 minutes and does nothing. I see your niece and nephew also go on reddit. Read a book that suggested you ask your kid, what an appropriate punishment for misbehaving would be, and then carry it out. Six year old son pinched his brother or something, so we asked what an appropriate punishment would be. He said, pluck out my eyeballs and throw me over a cliff, we didn't follow through, and stopped reading parenting books. He called your bluff, he owns you now, you should have followed through, for his own good. But what if the kid lives and grows up to overthrow me? Then he proves to be stronger, and you should be proud that you helped the next generation be more powerful. I'm sorry, little one. My kids were begging for a pet. I don't want to take care of a pet, and I told them that they don't clean up after themselves without me hassling them, so why would they clean up after a pet without me hassling them? Told them if they could keep their room clean for 6 months without me telling them, they could get a pet. Youngest child proceeds to clean room, then move clothes and a sleeping bag into the hallway, and lock his door so his room can't get dirty as he sleeps in the hallway. Kids are so ducking maliciously compliant sometimes it's ducking great. Taught my now 16 year old, to always compliment people who insulted you. We were in a Burlington coat factory in Michigan, when my mother was shopping for a bathing suit to take to Florida. There were few to choose from, so she was complaining, my kid was 4. A woman trying on pants, had said something rude to my mom who was asking my opinion, and my daughter caught on that my mother was agitated. She squeezed out behind me and told the woman, your teeth are such a pretty yellow. Haha, <laughs> I can't tell if she knew what she was really doing, but super awesome either way. Reminds me of a time I was about 6 and my little sister 4 was talking about the lady at the register's teeth. They were pretty messed up, she was loudly talking about how ugly and bad they looked. I felt bad for her and I knew you weren't supposed to say mean things about people. So I turned to my sister and loudly said, Emmeline if you don't stop talking like that, your teeth are going to look like that too. I'll never forget how sad that woman looked as she pursed her lips as if she was wishing her teeth away. My parents taught me to call 911 when I saw somebody doing something illegal. I called the cops on the Wiggles movie I was watching when I was 5 because a clown stole a cake. Luckily, the 911 operator realized I was young, my story didn't make sense because it was a kid's movie, asked to talk to my mom before sending out cops. When I was 11 I once called the FBI because I felt I had information on a serial killer, I didn't, I just thought I did, when the FBI answered, I got spooked and hung up. The FBI called back, keep in mind it's 2am in the morning, and my mom answered the phone, hello this is special agent Kim with the FBI and I believe your son just called us. That's not a call you want from the FBI at 2am about your 11 year old son, who last you saw was in his room, going to sleep several hours ago. I sat in my room waiting for my parents to call for me, they did, they were not pleased that I had called the FBI without speaking to them first. 
They were not pleased that I had called the FBI without speaking to them first. Oh shirt, they were the serial killers. I called 911 when I was 4 or 5 years old, because I witnessed the mailman steal a letter out of my mailbox. I had to be told how the mail system worked after that. I didn't call 911, but when I was 3 or 4 these people were moving out of their house next door. So at night, my sister and I see people taking furniture out of the house and taking it away, we thought they were robbers. My dad tried to implement the whole you must eat all the food on your plate in our house during meals. My mom was never a fan of that lesson, but my dad was stubborn so she just let it go. Well, one day my sibling had 2 to 3 bites of food left on their plate, and was very clear that they were absolutely full, and couldn't eat another bite. Dad wasn't having it, and insisted they could not leave the table until all the food on their plate was gone. My sibling realized they weren't going to convince our dad that they were too full, and finished the last few bites, and then proceeded to vomit on the table and our dad. He stopped enforcing the rule after that. Not a parent, but as a child I noticed my sister was writing her name on the walls, when she was drawing on them with crayon. Taking on the role of helpful big sister, I informed her if she was going to graffiti things, she shouldn't write her name and give herself away. A few weeks later, she was carving patterns into the wooden desk in the study, and carved my name into it instead. I remember in third grade getting in trouble for putting graffiti on the school wall. The artist had signed it with my first name, which is a fairly common name. I was both outraged at the false accusation, and offended that they thought I was that stupid. In kindergarten, I took a pencil to recess and wrote, duck on the playground with my name right below it, so it ended up looking like Duck. My name. Didn't think it through, had to go out and erase it with the principal. If you had just played your cards right, the principal would have thought it was a bully trying to insult you, shaking my head. I taught them to stand up for what they believe in. All of a sudden they believed veggies were the devil and bedtime should be abolished. I'm with them to be honest. Honestly, so am I, but I gotta do the parent thing. Besides, early bedtimes were for me, not them. I never understood how amazing bedtime was, until I started enforcing that shirt. We will tear down the oppressive establishment piece by piece. Overthrow the monarchy free the people. Mine tried to unionize, because I asked them to clean their rooms. Saw a clip on local news, about a toddler saving her mom's life by calling 911 when she collapsed. Figured it was a good idea to teach my toddler 911, had two cops at my door 5 minutes later. Good response time. My youngest niece did that, the false call, and the cops were cool about it. They stormed in thinking it was serious much to mortification of my sister-in-law, but soon the truth came out that it was a toddler who called them. They sat her down and had a long talk with her, explaining to her that calling 911 should only be for an emergency, like when people are hurt. Once she seemed to understand, they gave her a sticker of a police badge and left. Her interpretation, call 911, get sticker. When my son was about 3 or 4 he started to ask about how babies are born. I sat him down and gave him a very simple, age appropriate explanation. He just looked at me, shook his head and just said no. Very calmly, but in a I can't believe you think that's how it works tone of voice, like I'd told him fake news. I was prepared for difficult questions, and even prepared for the fact that he might ask me things that even I didn't know. But I was completely unprepared for him to just simply not believe me when I told him the truth. I just sat there not knowing what to do while he went back to playing Lego. When my brother was a kid, my dad and him stopped for a bathroom break on a road trip, and in the bathroom was a condom dispenser. My dad raised us on the idea of constantly lying to us, so we would question what we were told, so when my brother asked what condoms were and what they were for, my dad told him the truth. And explained that they're balloons that go on your penis so you don't get a girl pregnant. My brother stared at him in disgust, and replied, Why are you always lying to me dad? Well, 
That explanation does sound like a total lie, even though it technically isn't. When I was about 2 years old, my family was at a game in Angels Stadium. My mother went to the restroom and left me and my siblings with my dad. While he was busy watching I wandered off, when they eventually found me I was halfway around the stadium. A crowd had gathered to watch as a police officer held me out at arm's length while I screamed, Call the police, this man is not my daddy, over and over again. My parents had taught me stranger danger, but forgot to teach me what police look like. Call the police. Sir, we are the police. Nanny, not a parent, 2 year old was refusing to wear her hat, it was hot, I told her if she didn't put her hat on she would have to wait in the car. She started walking away from me, where are you going, car? My mom always said, if you give your kids a choice, be prepared to deal with whatever they choose. Applies to everything. In business, it's somewhat common to suggest a super high price if you don't want to do the thing. Except sometimes they agree and now you have to do the shitty thing. That's why you quote the price you'd suck it up and do it at. Win win. Taught my young toddler son how to go upstairs. I did not realize that going downstairs is in fact a completely different and far more dangerous skill set. Lucky for us, the kid seems to have finally grasped the finer points of head protection. Now I'm picturing a toddler throwing himself down the stairs with his arms wrapped around his head. It's more like this, scooches down one step safely, scooches down the second step safely, so pleased with his progress he happily steps forward and tumbles, head first, down the next 15 steps. Raw instinct kicks in, and he tucks and rolls until he reaches the hard stop at the bottom, and balls in that heartbreaking sort of way for 10 minutes straight. I tried the whole, have your kids quote chores for pay and good against one another, it's supposed to teach them about working for their money and not expecting handouts like an allowance. It turned into every time I asked them to do something I got, how much will you pay me? My parents had very clear lines about, these are your chores and you do them because you are a part of the family, and these are things we are willing to pay you to do. Because they are either horrific, or something we'd be willing to pay a professional to do. Hence that summer I got paid like 300 bucks to clean up all that pigeon shirt in the barn. When my daughter was young, I was trying to teach her the value of money and decided to start giving her an allowance. She had one few tasks to do around the house, and afterwards on the weekends before we would go out, I'd give her $5. I explained that because she helped out and did her chores, she had earned money to spend on whatever she wanted. She happily accepted and stashed her money in her room, I thought nothing of it. Later that evening, before I tucked her into bed after reading to her, she goes to her money jar, pulls out $2 and hands it to me, and explains that it's for being a good daddy, 